On today's episode, we react to Sunday's games. There's a lot of coaching news already starting to happen that's going to make some big impact for next season. And it's the truth about running backs part two. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like, leave us some comments, and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, January 31st. The is, fantasy is that footballers. A question? <laughs> what it, is it? Was, uh, you said that time really almost like you weren't sure if January had 31 days. Like, is that right, or are we on to Feb 1? Or I, we, I would uh, not, where does the time go? I would not be willing to confirm any of the speculation <laughs> okay. around the way I said the date. All right. Confirmed. Uh, but, but some of you could be right. Uh, welcome in, you're, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Are you Moore, trying to do the Andy knuckle Holloway. trick in your head while you're... <laughs> January, February. I just can't believe it's already almost February. Yeah, it's Super Bowl time, baby. I know. Oh, I know. brother. So, uh, Jalen Hurts is all right. Yep. Managed to get through Daniel Jones and Josh Johnson. <sighs> you know, he's... Uh, the, A.K.A. the gauntlet. I, I, I recognize that that is true, but there's too much crap being given for oh this is the easiest path the eagles were gifted they like they blew the socks off of both of those teams and so yeah you can say they don't oh, have any socks yeah they they were like get out of here right but due to the easy nature of those teams well look the giants got to the second round of the playoffs they sure you, you know now in hindsight we're like oh daniel jones so easy i think it's more it, it's less the reality in in and actually being a criticism of the Eagles. I don't think anybody disagrees that the Eagles have the best roster in football. Um, I think it's more the comedy of glancing at the playoff matchups and saying, well, you didn't you didn't go through Brady and Rodgers. Right? It's a quarterback specifically. It's not mm -hmm. the teams. It's, it's saying Daniel Jones was the back end of a joke for the better part of his career. And obviously Josh Johnson, no disrespect to the man, you were the fourth – option and um and they had to go to the fifth option right. which was Brock Purdy without an arm right so no it was uh you know Philadelphia did everything that they could they could do and they're favorites in the Super Bowl I mean they're two-point favorites over Kansas City Arizona is set to be uh home to a great one Patrick Mahomes Jalen Hurts the Andy Reid Bowl the Travis Kelsey Bowl uh you know the legacy of you know Patrick Mahomes uh, again he, he can add to it and his, I know the so his third time there. Yeah, so. <laughs> third time in four years, and and he uh, yeah, that's crazy. I remember when when they won their first Super Bowl, how somewhat disappointed he was that they didn't get to have the fanfare because mm -hmm. it happened to be during the 2020 season when they're you know like COVID kind of stopped the. I guess you would call it the celebration tour. Yeah, you a peopleless parade is not quite as fun as one with crowds and. A peopleless parade. Yeah, and, and all the germs involved. <laughs> so, I mean, he, he's sitting here, and I know the play, specifically, the late hit, which was a late hit. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. I know that that play specifically is kind of taking, you know, the majority of the conversation towards the end of the game along with the referees, and, you know, that's what you get in games like this. You get a lot of controversy. But I still, like, Mahomes getting on that ankle to turn the corner. Like, he got around the corner. It wasn't like he got stopped short and then the hit happened. Like, for him to go out with his body in the shape that it was in, it was a heck of a game, certainly a better game than we got with the unfortunate injury to Brock Purdy in the 49er matchup. But here we are, Kansas City, Philadelphia. Very it's excited. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. I, I didn't know if you had any more to add. Uh, I was going to say, the, the Shanahan quarterback magic ended – at Josh Johnson, like there, honestly, I know some of us, like uh, people out there, trust me, it's I, it's okay to admit it. There was a little bit of, of us inside that when Brock Purdy got hurt and Josh Johnson came in, you went, 
well, here Josh Johnson's about to have some success and make it through to the next round, and then Jimmy Garoppolo will be the starting quarterback in the Super Bowl because backup quarterbacks just come in and dominate. But this, the stakes, I think, were too too much for the other the team. Defense. Was, the other team was too yeah. up for the game for that to happen. Uh, Jimmy G did say, "quote I wish I had my helmet." Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's plenty you, of you wouldn't have believed what I could have done out there. <laughs> then that's like that's the best case scenario for Jimmy Garoppolo. I know. If I if, if I got put in, we would have been there. And, and and at this point, who the 49ers quarterback is for next year? Oh man. God I only knows. I, I mean, it, right now if I had to place money down on it, let's all say a name. Okay. Okay, just the last uh, at the same time? Yeah, same time. <laughs> okay. Let's say a name of who you think will be starting no. week 1 of next year. Uh and we'll count it down. Yeah. 3, 2, 1, Lance. Purdy. Purdy. So I said Lance. I said Purdy because I followed your rule of just say the last name. He oh. went a full name. Yeah, that was bad. So you went to Trey Lance, huh? I did. Okay. I did. I mean there but, are I mean we'll see. I mean there's an MRI coming for Mr. Brock Purdy. Trey Lance can do th a lot of things that Brock Purdy cannot. That's but, why I think he'll be the quarterback. But and that's but that's just an untested physical skill set. Brock Purdy has now shown that he can do things that maybe Trey Lance can do on the field mentally and working in offense. Hold on a second. I'm I'm becoming greatly offended. Deucer's Alley is producing some messages in the Slack channel. Andy Holloway noted Trey Lance stand. False. Hey, there's, False. There's no shame being over there of what could Just be. Just because he starts doesn't mean he'll succeed. But oh, he, he, probably, he, probably, he, <laughs> he probably will. He probably will. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Whichever one of them is the starting quarterback week one will do very well. Josh Johnson? Sure. All right. Uh, moving on. Let's jump into some uh, news. And uh, we have we have quite a bit of it. Yeah. News and notes from around the league. The coaching carousel is not complete. We still have uh, teams as of this recording, which we're recording the afternoon uh, on Monday, January 30th. But the Broncos, uh, you know, a big opportunity. Arizona doesn't have a head coach yet. But we do have a few announcements. The Panthers have made a decision. They grabbed Frank Reich. He is the new head coach of the Carolina Panthers. Steve Wilkes. Uh, they're moving on and quick thoughts on Frank Reich. Uh, I think it's a great hire. I think Frank Reich got, uh, got the shaft by the Colts. He did not deserve to be fired or deserve to have to go to, you know, uh, rookie quarterbacks and, and be put in a bad situation. I think he's a solid coach. And they said, the Panthers said from the beginning, they wanted someone with head coaching experience. They, they went out to the college ranks the time before they wanted someone that could really, you know, run an NFL franchise uh, with experience, and and I think Frank Reich, I was, he was one of the players or one of the one of the coaches I was hoping, you know, could have made his way to Arizona. And uh, he doesn't have the solidified quarterback situation in Carolina the way that you would have, you know, he certainly was the bad luck loser of the Andrew Luck situation, and it's persisted. He finds himself right where he left off, yeah. which is uh, on his knees praying for a quarterback. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Reich, Reich threw the first touchdown pass in Carolina Panthers history? That's correct. That's a fun little yeah, he has trivia The nugget. Carolina connection apparently allowed him to overlook the lack of a quarterback. Perhaps I mean, he will be a player coach. Perhaps <laughs> he will take over the reins <laughs> at quarterback. Carolina is an extremely interesting team of – they have, uh, like, it feels like there's. They have a defensive nucleus that you can build around and for the future. The offense has, I mean, you at least have DJ Moore, if nothing else. There's a lot of teams that don't have a superstar or a potential superstar wide receiver. They're they're a little bit away, but also, like, what's going on with that division right now? With yeah, Tom Brady uh, leaving. If, if Tom Brady, le even if Tom Brady stays, uh, they were a sub 500 team and won the division. If Tom Brady leaves and then the Bucks are just in a free fall of a, of a scenario, the Saints they're keeping Dennis Allen. They're they're a quarterback away. Like they have the, every team in that in that division has major problems. Right. So why not go and and bet that you can turn your team around faster than everybody else? That's fair. Are you will Are we willing to make a commitment here that we can be 
can, can I get you guys to commit that we can be pessimistic about their, whatever quarterback starts? Oh, yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. Starts for them? For yeah. sure. I'm in. Okay. I, I am dedicated to that. I mean, that. it's Sam Darnold. Oh, that's going to be easy then. I mean, like, that's Frank that's, Reich's the guy to turn that around. <laughs> I mean, like, they, yeah, they have a top 10 pick. Maybe they're real aggressive and they go get the third quarterback, whoever happens to be dropping of, of kind of the big three right now. But otherwise, it's it's Sam Darnold, and you're trusting the process for a year, trying to get some experience, and then get a quarterback next year. All right. Well, what else is going on? The Cowboys they let Kellen Moore go as their offensive coordinator. A mutual parting of ways is what Jason informed me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which and I think, yeah, I think is great news for Kellen Moore. This this, this is, is bad news for Mike McCarthy. It's great news for the Chargers because they're hiring Kellen Moore. And to me, this is the um, this is like when you're when you're shopping for a a car. And you stumble across the really, really nice car that the old person has that they put no miles on it. But they just wanted to change. Mm -hmm. So they got rid of it. And it's got like 5,000 miles what on it. What is this car doing here? You shouldn't. This car shouldn't be here. No. And so it seems like the Cowboys just decided like, you know, as a habitual thing, like somebody has to take the fall for not winning a Super Bowl this year. Yeah. And Mike McCarthy... He, the buck stops with him, and so now we'll stop with him even further. There's a good chance he'll call his own place. This, yeah. this good, is good luck, Mike <laughs> such great news uh, for the Chargers, for Justin Herbert. I love going from Lombardi to a new thinker, to Kellen Moore. I mean, you, you look at the offense that Dallas has run over the last several years. They've been top six most of the time when he's been their coordinator and uh, you know and that's even dealing with backup quarterbacks taking the field so I, I have a tweet here uh, Matthew Barry laid it out I exactly how my frustration what I've been talking but it, here it is on uh just with some statistics Kellen Moore so uh four years as the OC for Dallas finished top six in points scored in three of four led the league in yards in two of four top eight in passing yards three of four top ten in rushing yards three of four Average 312 yards a game and went 4-1 and one with Cooper Rush. Mike McCarthy's final two years in Green Bay, 18th in total yards per game, 16th in points per game with Aaron Rodgers, who then went on to be the NFL's back-to-back -back MVP. Yeah, Kellen Moore's good. We're pro <laughs> Kellen Moore. I'm just – this is like – Coaches don't I'm, exist. I'm so – well, the coaches just, exist, but like it, <laughs> the hiring of Mike McCarthy I thought was – was buffoonery when it happened. Then you had the whole thing of Mike McCarthy was like, well, I uh, like basically admitting that he lied during his job interview, still got the job. And, and now, all, now, now like the good part of the offense, he's like, no, you got to get out of here so I can try and do it. There are only two types of coaches in the NFL, retreads that don't work out and young guys that don't work out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the rest. I mean, that, that's all there is. I think there's a third type, which yeah. is the guys that don't ever leave because they're good. But they're so – I mean, when you really think about it, if you added up all the coaches that had head coaching or coordinator jobs over the last 10 years, you can count on one hand how many are in that category. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, So your your odds of succeeding are, are essentially nothing. Yeah, you've got oh, – Yeah, they're very low. But, we, I mean, McVay is still a massive success. Mm -hmm. Belichick's uh, Belichick. I think Belichick. Staley's the busy, biggest example of, like, how quickly it can turn on somebody. Yes. Like, we weren't sure he was getting fired. But it and that could easily flip around this year. I mean, Zach Taylor looks like that looks like a legit move. I mean, you went from worst to Super Bowl contention year after year. Yeah, they added Joe Burrow, but just adding a a franchise quarterback doesn't catapult you to be one of the best teams in the league. So it, it, the odds are against you, absolutely. But it can be done. Yeah, and we'll be here next year talking about a bunch <laughs> of moves. The Jets hired Nathaniel Hackett. As their offensive coordinator, um, that let, is let that breathe a little bit. <laughs> now you might be saying, "Wait, wait, wait! Remind me who Nathaniel Hackett is." That's not the that's not the guy who it's was just hired one. for the Denver Broncos and fired the same year because he was supposed to be an offensive guy. Now, here's the thing: a lot of people believe, whether it's correct or incorrect, when the Broncos were going hard after Aaron Rodgers, that Nathaniel Hackett was hired in part to help be alluring for getting Aaron Rodgers to be the quarterback of the Broncos. Now he goes to the Jets, where there's all these rumors, including, you know, reporting that the that they would pay the price to get Aaron Rodgers. It's like, okay, Nathaniel Hackett worked with Aaron Rodgers, and they that was when he was the back-to-back -back MVP. 
he is getting some jobs on the, on the like in what, his, what is his interview process like i can get you that my, my question was in the job interview no at normally at the point where you pull out the wallet and you're like showing photos of your family is it just it's, photos just, of it's just photos of him and aaron Rodgers. i'd be like oh I can't believe this is still in my wallet. That's so embarrassing. But here we are uh, dominating as the Green Bay Packers offense. As man. he turns in a resume missing last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that uh, does exist. Yeah. But it's just like, man, imagine if imagine if Aaron Rodgers was on the Jets. What could we do with this team? If, oh, okay, I'll talk if, to you guys if later. The, if you're the Packers, you trade Aaron Rodgers now, you get something. Sure. All right? And yeah. you don't trade him. He's sunsetting next year. The, I mean, pack, the Packers will absolutely look to trade Aaron Rodgers. They should trade Aaron Rodgers for sure. The question is whether or not Aaron Rodgers gives them enough time or of saying he's retire. coming back yeah, yeah. because he, he hasn't made his decision and they can't, you know, I doubt they're going to get another franchise to trade for him before he's committed to playing. And that's a really tough situation. But the Packers have to trade him. I mean, they just have to. Imagine. Like what? What do you do with a, your decision making process on Jordan Love if he's still We're going into year four? Yeah, they have to make the. Is Garrett Wilson a top ten wide receiver next year if Aaron Rodgers arrives in New York? That's probably that's pretty high, but yeah, I mean, what do you do this year? Eleven hundred yards. It will be far more consistent, and you'll have more touchdowns. Uh, what other news am I missing here? Michael well, Floor. Mike LaFleur, who was removed as the Jets' <laughs> offensive coordinator, immediately scooped up by the Rams as their new OC working with McVay. What are we doing here? It's musical chairs, man. Um, and then uh, Bill O'Brien. Yes. yes. This, this one I'm, I'm on board yes. with. I'm good with this one. Uh, Bill O'Brien is back in the NFL. Uh, good old Bobby. Uh, he's going to be the offensive coordinator again for the New England Patriots. And this has a lot of connections. He he has spent the last two years as the Alabama OC. So he did not coach Mac Jones. Uh, Mac Jones was already in the NFL when um, Bill O'Brien was the OC. However, he was there was a relationship there, part of the preparing for the draft situation where Bill O'Brien was in town for Alabama. But, I mean, Bill O'Brien has run successful offenses in the NFL. Certainly an upgrade over... Matt Patricia and Joe Judge trying to figure out how to run an offense. So I, th I think this is actually a really good hire. Bill O'Brien. I can't wait to see him on the sideline again. I've been missing him. <laughs> His, I feel like Bill O'Brien's true downfall was he just he thought he had a skill set that he didn't have, and we've all we're all guilty of that from time to time. His just happened to come on a stage where the entire nation looks on and judges what you if you do something right or wrong. If if he had remained. That skill set you're referring to is general manager general manager yeah. yes yeah and a lot of to be fair to him a lot of coaches think that they can be the head coach and the general manager and it turns out no you cannot most most of the time if he had just been the coach of the Houston Texans and someone else had done all the general managing Bill Bryan might still be the coach of the Texans yeah that's true Deshaun Watson might be yes. the quarterback of the Texans uh, all right, any other news we need to talk about? Oh, Vic Fangio. Yeah, that was oh. a big one. The Dolphins hired uh, Vic Fangio as their defensive coordinator. Huge hire. It's a what, good move. What a great move because this is a team. I, it reminds me a lot of what McVay did when he got son of bum and, and just hiring a great older <laughs> – you you don't like the the son of no, bum? No, it's, it's the, I like go it ahead a lot. And, go ahead and explain who it is. We, Wait, no, it, it it speaks for itself. Son yeah. of bum. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, he was indeed. The son of Bump. Now I don't even know his Wade Phillips. Name anymore. You don't, it yeah. <laughs> uh, but he he brought in uh, you know just a great defensive mind and said, "Hey, this is your. Uh, yeah. Let me do the offense. You just take over the defense." And they had such a great defense that worked with the Rams. This reminds me here of a similar situation. F Fangio has a great defense everywhere he is. He's as good as it gets on the defensive side of the ball. And I think he's he's going to get paid a lot of money to come here and just run that half of the team and you know, not have any interference whatsoever. Uh, by the way, Wade Phillips has a son of his own, right? Oh, Ooh. son of bum bum. Grandson no, of bum. It was a son of son of bum. Mm. Son of son of bum. Grand grandson, grandson of, bum. of bum. And what was yours, Mike? Son of bum bum. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm not sure about that one. I think I win. Um, Mine's funnier. Yeah. Uh, okay. You win on that. Yep. All right. We, uh, we're moving on into the truth. <laughs> 
You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Harold Wade Phillips. Harold? That's his first real his real first name. Wow. Son of Bum is now a How uh, old is Harold? You know he's the head coach of the Houston Roughnecks in the XFL? No, oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Son of Bum in the XFL. When does that start? Isn't that coming back sometime? Eh. Doesn't The Rock own it now? <laughs> I have no idea. Does anybody know? There's also the, uh, the what's the other USFL? One? Yeah, USFL. The, yeah, they keep showing me commercials of that, and I'm they're like, remember this day, and then it's I'm like, who? Bum what is football not football teams are these. Bum is not short for Harold. What? Oh, is Josh trying yeah, to? Yeah, Papa Josh trying to pull. A fast you talk one. about skill sets that somebody yeah. doesn't have. <laughs> Get right into humor. All right. We're into the truth episode, part two for the running back position. Jason and I talked through the top ten running backs last week. If you want to listen to that one, uh, there was Eckler, McCaffrey, Jacobs, Henry, Chubb, Barkley, uh, the combo of Pollard and Zeke we talked about, talked about Swift and Jamal Williams, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, and Dalvin Cook. Woo! We got more names, more people to talk about. And, uh, you know, this, this year running back scoring, it was down. Receptions at the running back position, they were down. The average RB2 score this year, 12.2 fantasy points. That That's, is yeah. not great. That's just barely above our good metric for running backs and down from what we've seen the last couple of years. Yeah, so we, we look at the truth data. We break it up into how many games did they give you that were great, which is 21 or more points. 12 points is the threshold for good. Seven or fewer. You busted. All right? And so, Boston. Thank you, thank you very much. Do you see? He was uh, Mr. Gronkowski said he's he's open to coming back next year. Oh, guys, did you guys catch that? I did no. not see that. So Neither he's just you wondering where Brady's going. Stop. Yes. Yes. Wow. Actually, he was. Uh, if you saw, don't forget about me. <laughs> he was interviewed, uh, and he talked about coming to Tampa, and how he pretty much let. I mean, it's the most Gronk thing you'd ever hear. He just let Brady do the research on where to go and just trusted that Brady would pick the right place and he would just go with him. And he's like, that's the best. And then he hears, he's like, Tampa. It's like, what? You know? And then he shows up. He's like, and then I realized it was really great. That's, that's a good life. Yeah. He's just in his pocket. That's like uh, when you have your own personal, like you're a travel agent, mm -hmm. like your friend, is, like I, I have a, a friend of mine and she's like the travel agent for the group. Yeah. And I was like, She's like, hey, we're going to do this, this, this. Like, Whatever, man. <laughs> you just tell me where to go and tell me it's going to be cool. That's that's amazing. That's and, a great and, life and for Gronk. Uh, Gronk is the same age as Travis Kelsey. So you have the possibility that he goes somewhere next year and has relevance. Because if he's with Brady, he will have relevance. Brady will just throw him sure. the football. Until they both just. what? But what if he goes to the Raiders? Yeah, that would be, that'd be a problem. I mean, yeah. Is there room for Waller and? Yes. No, but there uh, is room for. I both. mean, would you pick up Gronk under that news in Dynasty? Yeah, I mean, yeah, mo probably. Mo <laughs> most Dynasty rosters when you're 30 deep have don't some look cuttable. At the, see, don't look at the tight ends that I pick up during the off season. It's embarrassing. All right, number 11 on our list here, Ramondre Stevenson. All right, he finished at 11. He was drafted in the eighth round by fantasy managers, the RB36 off the board. Obviously a huge win for anybody that grabbed Ramondre. His consistency rank, it surprises me. It was 16th. Good or bad? You it surprises me on the bad side simply because I'm looking at his game log. If you go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, we have the consistency uh, chart. And it was really, you know, it was like, Seemed like you were happy you started him all but five games. Yeah, so what happened is three of his last five games he busted, and the first two games of the season before he really took over that role were complete and utter bust. So you, you've got you've got a pretty high – I mean, on the course of the season, that's 29% of his games that were bust games. And really the second half of the season after their bye week, he had like one really good game. And the rest were either those bust games or, or mediocre. That being said, he also got injured during that span. And we don't always remember sure. the injuries when they play in the games. Because you look back last year, you know, once once we're into 2023 uh, draft season, 
we're going to look at his game log and see he didn't he didn't miss any games and not remember that he was playing through injury during that stretch where he was bad. To me, the truth of Ramondre Stevenson is more like his first half consistency rank, which he was number 10 overall. I think he was as rock solid as it came, and then he got injured. That's Damian the way that Harris, I look at his yeah, season. Yeah, no, Damien Harris is a free agent. Ramondre Stevenson is very young. You know, dynasty players want to know what they have in Ramondre Stevenson and what we can expect next year in, in New England. You have a new offensive coordinator coming in. You have a stick of dynamite in your hand that may or may not light is what you have with Ramondre Stevenson because even going into next year, the the Patriots will do something. They'll do something at the running back position, and most of the time when we have that scenario, you can say, oh, okay, well, it's a day. It wasn't a day to draft capital running back. I'm not going to be very concerned about them eating into the workload of the starter, Ramondre Stevenson. But draft capital is switching for running backs. These guys who are they're starting to make a splash, getting drafted later, getting drafted on day three. And the Patriots, there's, they're a wild team. You're never exactly sure how they feel about certain players and players who were drafted late, taking over the job who you felt like should have had the job. If, but if Ramondre Stevenson keeps this role, he's going to be fantastic. Now you have an actual OC coming in with Bill, Bill O'Brien, and they will it, it will be better on offense for him. But you are you just – at any moment, there could be another running back who comes in and Ramondre Stevenson's role completely changes away from what it was last year. So I, I have a concern. First of all, he was third most targets at the running back position, fourth most receptions. Awesome, right? A stabilizer. Third most evaded tackles. You watched him play football. You're like, oh, that guy's yeah, really good. good. Am I? I need you guys to really, Jason. Do you have the same concern about another back coming in and and hurting Ramondre that Mike brought up? Because in his, you know, history past, that's been a regular concern with New England. I don't know why I'm not as concerned about Ramondre's situation, and I think it's just because I'm biased. Yeah, uh, I I think that is probably the case. Are you concerned they spend a pick on somebody significant? That would be the concern, but if I had to make my bet as to whether or not someone significant comes in, I would bet against that. I I do think that they will go into next season with Ramondre Stevenson being the primary guy. They drafted Pierre Strong this last year. You That's know, exactly what my bias is. A, a lot of these <laughs> a lot of these uh running backs. You look at Damian Harris. Damian Harris rookie year was nothing it was Pierre Strong's rookie year so you know they might uh, draft another round four type of running back or bring in some older veteran I think Ramondre Stevenson starts next year as the primary dude at running back and I, I I'll be I'll be in on him but you've got to you've got to make your bet if you're looking at his value in a dynasty it, it is not a guarantee it, it is absolutely I've seen mock drafts where uh, a great running back is is drafted there. You know, you've now got the Alabama connection um, with you know with Bill O'Brien coming here. So if they draft Jamar Gibbs and uh, want him to be the pass catching guy, that would destroy uh, the 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 you know three down value of Ramondre Stevenson. Uh, all right, uh, let's go ahead and take a quick break and come back with Joseph Mixon. <laughs> not not heard. Wait, 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 you can hear me fine. My button is fully pressed. Yeah, we can hear you totally fine. I've, I've thought, you think you got your mute button I've, on there, buddy? I've, oh, it's definitely. I've thought for a little bit there could be a mute button problem. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen at home, you didn't, you got sent to a fine uh, sponsor break. Just beautiful people supporting the podcast. We got a real loud slurp <laughs> right, right into in the, the microphone. microphone. It was a pretty big slurp. It was the, oh, yeah. It was like synced up with the, the music dropping. It sounded a lot like this. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. What do you got? What do you got in the mug? I uh, got some LaCroix. Like oh, yeah? Key, key lime. How do you contain the bubbles? You don't. Uh, oh, oh, they you, come out the bottom. You don't burp. I yeah. forgot about it. He's like the BFG. So, wait, you could, you could chug like an A&W root beer on the show mm -hmm. with no concern. Well, I mean, other than the chugging of the sounds that would then emit. Like you, do you drink the, any the carbonated be, during no, the show? No, absolutely not. See, carbonated during the show, Mike. Uh, Mike and I have to. I am almost one hundred percent carbonated during the show. Yeah, that, yeah, and and in life, and in life. 
Interesting. That's why I'm going to pop. <laughs> someday. Gets, I don't know how to burp. Someday you will just. Just explode. Okay. All right. <laughs> you was get a phone call. It finally happened. He's out. He <laughs> oh, Jace. Am, he Jace am, he's all over the place. <laughs> Joe Mixon. What a weird year for Joe Mixon. 12th in fantasy finish. Thank you, week nine. Uh, 26 years old. RB7 off the board. Consistency rank was 11. Like, this is so... He was drafted as the RB7. He finished as the RB12. He had a consistency rank of RB11. So later on, when we're not doing a truth episode, the story might be a lot different than what we talk about here to contextualize the year. But this he had 7% great games, 47% good, 13% bust, missed time due to injury. You yeah. know, we just got done with a playoff matchup where Samaj P. Ryan outsnapped Joe Mixon, 40 Three to twenty-three. I was going to bring it up. I, I'm really concerned about Joe Mixon's long-term value. He he does not carry much dead cap. Um, you know he he could be cut with five million this year. I think three million the year after that. And he has not really been very effective. He has not shown them that he's worth twelve, thirteen million dollars a year, which is what they're paying him right now. Obviously, you have that game, the game. The game that Andrew remembers clearly because he got to play against him in week nine where he, he went off for 50-plus fantasy points and was miraculous. From that point on, and that was the middle of the season, he had one game with 15 fantasy points the rest of the way. And then, like you said, you saw in this last uh, playoff match where he was being out-snapped by Samaj a win. They were in a close game where everything mattered. I think the team was kind of showing that there are situations – where they think P. Ryan is the better option or just as good as Joe Mixon. It's strange because this was a year where he set his career high in receptions. Uh, 60 receptions on the year, 441 yards, half as many touchdowns on the ground as last year. Right, Last year was his only double-digit year at 13. He was back to seven. Lower yards per carry on the year. Far fewer carries, a lot of that due to injury, but didn't, you know, he's at 814 rushing yards. And you, you look at the situation, he's 26 and a half years old. I don't think Joe Mixon is done. And you say, well, the, what, what offense would you rather be a part of? Mm -hmm. So it, it's going to be a very – I think the, the, the wounds of having Joe Mixon this year will make a big mark in next year's drafts. He'll, I he'll still be a second-round pick. Yeah, he'll, he'll be a good enough pick. And I do think that as time goes on and you look back and you say, oh, he was, he was a running back one last year. He's 26 years old. He's still got two years left on his contract. I think there's going to be a really rosy narrative that could be painted for Joe Mixon. That's why. Could it be true then? This, it, it could be true. I would bet against that being mm -hmm. true, which is why this seems like the perfect time for me if I am a Joe Mixon manager to try to cash in trade for in dino youth in dynasty and and get out of my future you know capitalize on what joe mixon has done and not be holding the bag when it runs out yeah joe mixon feels like a a tier of running back that will happen in redraft where the the main guys are gone the people who always want a running back first or to you know just, just stock up early which i, I get it it feels like That'll, Joe Mixon will be a guy that I want someone else to draft Joe Mixon so I can get a better wide receiver. P. Ryan's not under contract for next year. Uh, he'll be an unrestricted free agent. We'll see what they do at the backfield. Maybe they are a team that invests in a middle-round pick. Would you rather have Joe Mixon, I assume, over a Dalvin Cook in a dynasty league? Yes. Just simply due to the age? I, Jason's I'm not, not sure. I'm not sure. I think I would rather have Dalvin Cook than Joe Mixon personally. Joe was, Mixon has been – very inefficient. I mean, his his workload and expectation this year was everything you could have hoped for and dreamed for when he was on the field, and he disappointed too much. I was talking to a good friend of the show, Paul Charchian, who is fantasy football legend. He's a Minnesota guy, and just getting the sentiment up there. And this is just sentiment, of course. This is like media, fans. Things inside the team can be completely different, but he was – telling me the sentiment is Dalvin Cook is either gone or heavily restructured just to come back next year as, and with Adam Thielen as well the Thielen one makes sense but the uh, Ezekiel Elliott plan but it just well Zeke didn't have to restructure no he will mm -hmm. 
That's, oh, that's, that's yeah, the story. Sure, this sure. I'm saying it's the same story for this offseason. Right. And, and if, if Dalvin, you want to come back, you better give some money back. And it's like if Dalvin Cook goes back to the Minnesota Vikings f- for less money, he's still Dalvin Cook on the Minnesota Vikings, and you're not as concerned about uh, him. But it's like if that is a conversation that's going to have to happen, that's that, uh, like will Dalvin Cook, is he the type of person who accepts that that is the – the, the scenario he's in, where you say, "Fine, release me. I'll go find another team." There's just a it, lot of a lot of, uh, of of variables up in the air with him right now. I I could see him taking a a Melvin Gordon route and going to a different team, having some fantasy relevance. <laughs> going to Chicago, uh, sure, but uh, you know that's uh, his potential dead cap this season would be six million if they cut him. Now there is a big difference here between the Vikings and the Bengals. Bengals have plenty of cap space. So while a lot of that I'm sure is going to be going to Joe Burrow, they can they, they don't need to get out of Joe Mixon. I would expect him back. So that's interesting I would to hear that from Churchill. I assume you guys saw the news too. The NFL just announced the salary cap yeah. for next year, two hundred and twenty four point eight million dollars, sixteen million higher than last year's cap. Yet another way the cap is somewhat of an illusion for teams between restructures, cap rising, highest ever. Uh, I think Mixon, Mixon's year, you know, finishing at 12 with missing that many games of injury, that will be part of the positive narrative next year, being attached to a good quarterback. Um, certainly, we know that touchdowns, they are a fluctuation. So I, I think there's still some good years. Yeah, he'll, be, he'll be good. He won't be elite. It's just so crazy that 25% of his fantasy points came <laughs> in that one game. Sure. Yeah, yeah, against me. Uh, Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders came in at 13. What a strange fantasy story Miles Sanders will be. RB 31 in the draft, so Miles Sanders was a huge value. 25th in consistency, 41% good, 18% great. You ready for this? Mm-hmm. 47% bust. That means Oof. 40, uh, basically 50-50 shot that you were going to get seven or fewer points from Miles Sanders. Mike, I don't know if there's a player you shook your head more at than Miles Sanders this year because – when he was having one of his big games and, and and the team was relying on him, he always delivered when relied upon. Yes. And wasn't always relied upon. And we we watched the playoffs. You know, Kenny Gainwell is an explosive, Poor talented man. player. He's looking so good. The team was still willing to give important carries to Boston Scott. So what do you do with Miles Sanders? This is a 50-50 bust. You know, 50% of the time you were happy. I mean, it – Best his, offensive line in football. Number one, he's a free agent. So him and him and David Montgomery, what what happens with them? Do they go back to their team? Do they go out and try to secure the bag and get an opportunity elsewhere? I mean, so those I just I I don't feel like I have a good read on what Miles Sanders will do, but he will be. I mean, if if he is in fact brought if he's brought back. Then if he is drafted accordingly, which is drafted as a, I mean that's like a dead zone running back, then it's it's perfectly okay. Maybe you have a a break glass in case of emergency plan of I can get Miles Sanders in the fourth round and I know that I'm going to be flipping a coin if it's good or bad. Jason, who are you more excited about in a dynasty format heading into this off season, Miles Sanders or David Montgomery? Who would you rather put on your roster today as of this recording? David Montgomery. I think I, I agree. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I, Miles Sanders. Um, we don't know that he is going to be back as an Eagle. I don't think he'll get a massive payload and a, and a massive workload for a different team. And he's talented. I mean, what is the truth about Miles Sanders? He looked great all year. Ran for four point nine a carry. Was awesome. Not necessary for the Philadelphia Eagles offense. Sometimes it works out, and sometimes they just flat don't need him at all. So, and you have. He's running behind PFF's number one offensive line. And when a running back goes from that, should they go to a different team that is nowhere near that ranking? And then all of a sudden that running back starts to look uh, not nearly as stellar. Don't be surprised. Yeah, the thought is maybe he goes out and gets a two- to three-year deal the way that James Conner did when he left Pittsburgh. Sure. Uh, That could be the situation for Miles Sanders. I do think he's a talented player. And I actually think, you know, barring injury, he could hold up as somebody's primary running back. But does he end up in a situation where all of a sudden Miles Sanders is the backup to Austin Eckler or something like that this right. offseason? I don't know what that market's going to look like. Najee Harris came in at 14. Oh, man. Finished at 14. Consistency was 18. The consistency in the first half, Ooh, 38. Bad. And yet, here we were 
with Najee Harris on a bad offense, salvaging his season. Now, drafted at RB6, finishing at 14, not what you wanted, but... The second half of the year... It was a, it was great. He was great. He Our consistency metric, he, he was number four. I mean, he never really had terrible games and often was very good. It looked like he finally got healthy, and it was really after that bye week. I don't know if the I little... I think they took a plate out of his foot. Or, no, he stopped playing with the plate in his shoe, if I remember that correctly. It was a difference. It certainly was a difference, and, and he uh, – you just saw it in the way he ran, the yards per carry, the aggressiveness – uh, it was it was a massive difference. I don't know where this team is heading offensively. Thirty five percent good game, six percent great. So you didn't win weeks because of Najee Harris, unless you somehow played him the final week of your fantasy season. Uh, but still, some hope and optimism, especially if you're in a dynasty format and yes. you're saying, uh, "I'm watching." I mean, Mike was one of them. You're <sighs> yes, watching Najee Harris maybe expire <laughs> in front of your eyes after a freaking great. Great rookie year of boom, blue chip foundational dynasty running back for a handful of years. Second year, it felt like you were, it had already expired. You're like, I should have traded Najee. <laughs> oh, no. No, I, I really like Najee going forward. You've got an offense that, even though Kenny Pickett is never going to be something special and what have an they, elite what do they offense, do there? Um, it, it's still a situation where he'll get better. The offense should be better next year for sure. And, Najee is still young. Uh, I, I think the arrow points up over this season for next year, and I'm I'm probably going to be far more in on Najee Harris in year two with Pickett than I was coming into this season. Do you view him as an RB one? I will probably have him as an RB one next year. I think he's almost right, certainly. I think he's right on the more upper RB two category for me. What about you, Mike? Yeah, I would agree. Back end RB one still. Getting a ton of volume and in this, I year, feel real cozy with him as my RB two. I'll put it that way. Oh, like, yeah, like the ultimate RB two on a team that might not score as much as other teams. Yeah, we, when you when you were saying uh, you didn't win because of Najee, the, that was my first thought. Was he is a perfect running back too? He's he's not the guy that's going to go out and try to put up forty points, but you've got just a solid uh, position slot filled. And we got to deal with if what felt like the first year ever of of the doubts of like. Is Mike Tomlin going to go to a running back by committee? Because Jalen Warren, the undrafted rookie, has got juice. He looks fast out there. And, yeah, he, he started to get some more work. But it never turned into a committee. It was it was Najee when he was available. So the, to be able to fight that off, there is a, a ton of confidence. So just real quick, because you said Kenny Pickett. And I'm saying, well, what, what do you do here with a quarterback that, let's see, started – what, 10, 10 games or so? Maybe a little bit more, but he finished 2,400 yards, seven touchdowns, oh, nine, nine interceptions. That's awful. In And he played, yeah, I guess he missed the, four or five games. The quarterback play in that division outside of Joe Burrow was very difficult to watch. Yeah. I mean, if you have K Kenny Pickett and Deshaun Watson over the back half of the year, this was um, smash mail. But this like, was not aired out modern football but it's like are you stuck with him or do you think they try to find a an ejection seat the hard part for me is w the nature of the Steelers organization and the decisions that they make so I I think this is not the kind of team that you know the Jets owner will come out and say I'll trade anything I want for Aaron Rodgers that's not the Steelers right you know, I know last offseason we were rumoring or, you know, talking about the Steelers. I just think that they're the kind of team that wants to build some – maybe they'll build competition in the draft. I don't know what they do. I don't think Kenny Pickett showed enough to say he's the future, but I don't think he showed so little that you can't give him another shot. Okay. Uh, I think the dump trucks days are over. Uh, Leonard Fournette comes in at 15. Oh, man. Uh, finished at 15. Drafted as RB14. Consistency was 15, so right on the nose. Had some games. Caught some passes. Uh, that was kind of the highlight there. 83 targets, 73 catches. Don't look at the rushing yardage. Don't look at the rushing touchdowns. But, you know, 13% bust, 40% good, 7% great. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's got a uh, $1 million dead cap to get out. Uh, so, I, you know... Is he even on the team? If he's on the team, does he have a quarterback that's going to check the ball down over and over and over and over? 
Probably not. The only situation that I like Leonard Fournette's situation is <laughs> if Tom Brady is back and Leonard Fournette is back. I don't even like it then. Not another year under the – with how good Rashad White looked, I don't even know if I like it. Yeah, I mean, that's – but that's the best case right. scenario. I don't think there's any situation where he finds another team that just says, man, Leonard Fournette was the number four overall pick in – 2017, he's great. I'm going to make him the dude of our franchise. No, it's not happening. He, he he hasn't looked great. He's just been a solid veteran who catches a lot of passes, and that helps a lot in fantasy. Should fantasy managers go out and, and while he is still a Buccaneer, try to make a move for Rashad White? Like, Do you believe in the future of Rashad White enough to, to be the bell cow on this Tampa team in transition? I don't believe in the future of the Buccaneers offense. So I have a hard time saying I want to invest in any of those pieces there. Yeah. I mean, I, it, to me, it's more about the talent of Rashad White. You know, there's some offenses that we do not believe in. We just sure. talked about Pittsburgh. You know, Brees Hall, that offense, didn't believe in that one. Um, I guess I'm just curious if you think Rashad has the – because it seems like you could get him now, obviously for a price that's cheaper than – if Fournette departs. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would certainly – I would rather have Rashad White than Fournette, and you might be able to actually get that done in a in a one-for-one -one trade, trade the veteran with the bigger name, with the better history for the up-and-comer. Uh, you know, I don't know. Most leagues probably wouldn't do that deal straight up, but you, you could try, and I would rather have White. But I still just don't think – I don't think Brady's back with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and if he's not – it's probably going to be very lousy. Kenneth Walker, 22 years young. RB 37 in the draft, finishes at 16. Uh, had a game and a half missed due to injury. Consistency rank was 14, but number seven from weeks five and on, which is really, you know, that's past Rashad Penny's injury, rookie time, acclimation. Yeah. That's, Detonation. that's what matters for, for Kenneth Walker is when he became what he's going to be. Because I think we all project that what he spent this season doing without Rashad Penny is the role he's going to find himself in next year. And so from that point on, being the consistency rank number seven, being absolutely fantastic with very few bust games. And, you know, it, it, from that point on, 8% of his games were busts. And he's talented. You watch it on the field. You go, oh, there's a reason why this guy, you know, some people were liked him more than Brees Hall coming out. He was a fantastic prospect. He's on a team that wants to run the ball, who now magically was able to fix their offensive line. And the the, the future is very bright for Kenneth Walker. He had, One of eight rookie running backs yes. since 2011 with 1,000-plus rushing yards, nine-plus rushing touchdowns, and 35-plus targets. And those eight rookie running backs, it's a – pretty good list to be in Barkley Taylor Zeke Doug Martin dude I mean Doug, Martin Doug Martin's his, rookie season was stupid Doug Martin had his time 1,450 real, real four yards the muscle hamster can only run so long Mike yes oh, I, I get it and then so Walker 17 15 plus yard runs that's the third most among running backs and most for a rookie running back since Saquon like he was a huge play guy out on the field and like their offensive line can get even better. They were what they were ranked uh, where I lost it. it was like twenty seventh. Yeah, yeah, PFF 27th. had them ranked twenty seventh, so that can improve as well. I mean, it, he. I don't think we're gonna get to the point where Kenneth Walker is a top three pick, top five pick. I don't think he'll be there, but he's kind of like the. He he seems like he might be the best running back one. That is not part of the true three down guys. I will be curious who you right now you prefer in a dynasty format between him and this next guy, Travis Etienne at mm. 17, 24 years old, was drafted as the RB 17, finished there, consistency rank of 23. The first half it was it was pretty good. Second half consistency it, was not so good. It, his the year doesn't was all over the place. It really was, and. uh 35% bust games, 35% good, 18% great. What was your takeaway? What's the truth about Travis Etienne for you? He was 5.1 yards per carry, um, which was right between Pollard and Nick Chubb. So that was incredible. Nine yards per reception. Explosive player. 
Yeah, to, to give him kind of the same benefit you're giving Kenneth Walker, since this was basically his rookie year and he started the year with, you know, James Robbins' a similar situation. You look at week five on, and our truth score, he was the running back 16th, so not quite as good as Kenneth Walker. You thought you had something unbelievably magical when he took over, and then he had back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back top 10 running back performances. It seemed like he, he was, was 40-yard runs every week. Yeah, I mean, it just seemed like he was going to be, um, you know, a top three dynasty running back. From that point on, week 10 and on, you know, he had basically one very good game left. Uh, you know, one game over 15 fantasy points. And that was he, got knocked, Houston. he got knocked out of one, right, due to he injury? Did, yes, yes. And then, well, yes, he played early in that game, was uh, – 8% of snaps in week 12. Right. But then wasn't injured and came back and played fine the next week. But there was a lot of concern with the foot because that was that was the issue that, that he uh, was, was working through. Now, he was an incredible college prospect. I really loved him coming out. He showed enough flashes of brilliance and those long runs that I am a believer in him going forward. He's on an offense and a team with a quarterback that should just keep getting better. So I'm in on Travis Etienne. If you say, who would I rather have yeah. between Kenneth Walker and Travis Etienne, it's Kenneth Walker, but it's not an anti-Travis Etienne. A, yeah, and I mean, you get a couple years back with Kenneth Walker. They're essentially the exact same size as players as well. Like so their least, weight? Yeah, their they're height and weight are, are very, very That's similar. That's wild. They, at least Walker's listed at 5'9", 211. Etienne's listed at 5'10", 215. So, you know, they're very similar in size. Very no one gets blown up the way the tra uh, Travis Etienne. <laughs> I think the reason I called him the work pony is because he looks like he explodes. There, is, there were like eight plays I can think of on the season where a running back got hit and went backwards five yards in the air, and I think seven of them were Etienne. <laughs> it was, it's true. Um, Alvin Kamara, what's the truth about this guy? Oh, 18 man. is where he finished. Drafted as the RB8, one of the big busts. I mean, Huge bust. If you were drafting, okay, go back in time, mix in. Alvin Kamara, both of them ended up l much lower in fantasy finish than where you drafted them. Who would have burnt you more? Oh, Alvin Kamara. Yes. Alvin Kamara was was atrocious. He did not do hardly anything good for you. 7% great games, that's not a good number. Only 33% of his games were good, that's not a good number. 33% of his games were flat out bust, that's a bad number. His efficiency metrics on a per-touch basis were not like what Alvin Kamara has seen the rest of his career now he's getting older and you could say well maybe he has lost a step you could also make the argument look this offense was incredibly injured you didn't have the quarterback that you should have had in Jameis Winston so they had to go to Andy Dalton the receivers all went down to injury uh, you know you lost Michael Thomas and Jarvis Landry and for a while uh, Chris Olave and so yeah you're going to focus in on Alvin Kamara but at 27 and a half years old on an offense that to me, does not seem like they're just going to snap their fingers and get it together. I find myself very pessimistic for a bounce back campaign ever again from Alvin Kamara. Six rushing touchdowns over the last two seasons for Alvin Kamara. What? No. I, what? These are the numbers in front of my face. Unless yeah. I'm reading something wrong. He had two this year and four last year. So that is a Wait, concern. What? Yeah. When, how long ago was the Christmas Eve game? To 2020. That was 2020? So I, I just want to highlight, like, you've gotten six touchdowns total in two You talk about Mixon. He had seven. You're like, ah, oh, it wasn't 13 like last year. Woof he had two this year. He's also, he's also not – like, he's always been pinnacle efficiency. He's been at 3.7 and four the last two years. The reception totals Ooh. that were always 80 receptions, 47 and 57. So it does seem like you're entering the twilight of Alvin Kamara's – career did did something happen after two, yes 2020 <laughs> like did someone leave the team well no yeah the arrival of your hero james winston oh, at that yeah. point in time hey i would take that if they would let him play instead they're like no we're we're going with andy dalton <laughs> so yeah Who alvin knows? Kamara in a dynasty format this you are just dalvin cook or alvin Kamara. Dalvin. Dalvin Cook. Even if he... Even what about he, Dalvin Kamara? Would you I, take him over both? Sure. I think if Dalvin Cook gets cut, which is a lot of alliteration, I, I would still <laughs> prefer where he goes to over and, Alvin Kamara's situation. And legalities. Here's uh, right. what happens. Unfortunately, of 
the you have March first is the assault case for Alvin Kamara. That there's video of it, so that likely turns into a suspension. I have I have no idea. Is it one game? Is it six games? Don't know. I would rather talk about my, my made up scenario. Is Devin Singletary under contract next year? He's a free agent. Excellent. What about the brothers? Ooh, what the, the You talk about him leaving Minnesota. Devin Singletary's a free agent. What if you put the brothers together in Buffalo? Dalvin and James. I like it. Pretty pretty fun. That would be a lot of fun. And I it think would I'd probably, be a little freaked out as a Dalvin Cook manager, yes, though. I was gonna say it probably <laughs> wouldn't be the best situation for his fantasy yeah. totals. Finishing up here, we already talked about Zeke, who was at nineteen. We talked about it on the last show. So James Conner ends our uh ends our show. I mean, th- he's great. James Conner was great. He was so good. <laughs> and th- he's a player that you'll look at six months from now, five months from now, whatever, and you'll say, oh, he finished at 20. Oh, he's he's old. But when he played football this year. In the second half. He was really good. This it it James Conner was one of those guys that destroyed my teams because I was all, all the chips were in on James Conner the, the entire off season. I couldn't believe his, his draft value. He felt like he was plummeting for a guy who was coming off a huge performance. Things had not changed. If they had changed, they'd gotten even better in James Conner's favor. He's going to score so many touchdowns. So I'm drafting him everywhere. And then the start of the season is just atrocious followed up by a, a lengthy uh, injury. You missed three games. So by then, I mean, your your teams are already you're having to make decisions about what do I hold on to this guy? Just, I'm, my teams are already wrecked. And he, then by the time he comes back, you don't have him anymore, and he has this huge run takes people's the people to titles. Number one, Jason. Number one over the second half in terms of consistency rank. Yeah, the he truth was, score. He was unbelievable in the second half of the year. Now part of that is the fact that one player that was absent was Kyler Murray for a lot of those games. Kyle was looking up uh, some of the splits as to how James Conner has been over the last two years with Kyler and without Kyler is drastically different, and it's primarily because of the opportunities. In games with Kyler, 14.8 opportunities per game. Games without Kyler, 22.5. Now, some of those games, you know, it's a smaller sample, nine games without Kyler. Some of those games were when he lost Chase Edmonds as well and had a bunch of carries, but I do think there is some validity to this where when Kyler's not there, James Conner became kind of the – focal point of right. the offense he he had to the the offense ran through James Conner with a backup quarterback in place that being said to start this yeah it's next gonna be year, there to begin the year probably it's gonna be a backup quarterback and you know they're still paying James Conner quite a bit of money we'll have to see what the offensive system there's gonna be a lot of offensive change in Arizona but what we do know from the end of the season is that James Conner was a very effective running back once again and you know RB5 from week 9 on can catch the ball can score touchdowns can move a pile and will be valuable without Kyler all right what's the truth about Jonathan Taylor give it to me in a couple sentences here since he finished at 35 but obviously the number one pick off the uh in fantasy drafts yeah the second half when he started to get healthier before then re-aggravating the injury he was consistency rank of nine he's a very good running back just had a cleanup procedure on the ankle, uh, Bet- Bet says that this should not be a concern. He should come into 2023 fully healthy, and he'll be a top three fantasy pick. Any concerns with being, you know, generally within the vicinity of Jim Mercy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Few concerns. Few concerns. Lesson to be learned on uh, Colts players. So, did you ever hear the? Did you hear the story about Josh McDaniels? No. And the Colts, because you remember. He oh, sp- oh, the uh, you remember the, he spurned them the, at the, the altar, right? The yes. poop story. Uh, I uh, yes 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 yeah, okay I have not heard first of all if, if there is a poop story in football it should be on this show <laughs> so Jason you have not heard this so Josh McDaniels if you remember he was offered the he take he was going to take the job. I do remember when he was the head coach of the Colts for, for a, moment. a moment before Frank Reich and then he just bailed on them the story is being reported that his wife essentially was so kind of let's say skeeved spooked spooked by his her interactions with Jim Irsay when he came over he was like very weird at dinner and then like departed to the restroom for an elongated amount of time. Like like the amount you spent. Right. So a big bada boom. Like a big boom and then But came, like a really uncomfortable amount of time in like, a bathroom. Like when's he coming for, back? For this professional 
meeting. Right. Like, should I call an ambulance? Like 40 minutes type of. What? I don't do that. No, I know. You would. And so. But you don't. So they backed out. They so backed, they backed out. That's the, I think they were talking. Was that on McAfee? They were talking about that. Yeah, I don't remember where it got reported, and I don't care. But it's uh, yeah because because it, it's it's I a don't fun care story. where it was reported it's it's a true story it has to be true <laughs> I mean um, never lost a coach due to a bowel movement but uh, wow but pro- what uh, they still what are they what are they gonna do what are they gonna do the oh Colts? you you you're setting you want me to like tease you into Jeff Saturday discussion here Mike <laughs> Mike would love it I don't no, think you no, want no, I think I you do. want this to happen here's, here's the thing. It's the angels on the shoulder of like the angel and the devil. Yeah, you mean yes, yeah. but it's not two angels, Mike. <laughs> Correct. But for the Colts, the team, the human beings that have devoted their life to the game of football, the fans who have devoted so much time and heart and energy and money into the Colts, for them, I don't want Jeff Saturday back. For the, the for playing, the content for the Benny Hill music playing on a weekly basis. Then Jeff Saturday can go there, but <laughs> well, shit, Cardinals but, will share this music. But like the fact that Jeff Saturday went out and did what he did, which was fail at epic proportions of the worst uh, collapse of all time, and then the final week of the season losing to the worst team in football, and Ursay still wants to hire him as the head coach is that's how good of a friend he is. You've got a friend in me. We need the FBI looking into what is happening over there. All right, quick shout out: Damian Pierce consistency rank of thirteen. Brees Hall consistency rank of four in his limited yeah. opportunity. Brees Hall, uh, I had teased a video a while back of there was five running backs that finished over the seventy percent good threshold, and it was well, who was the fifth one. I don't think anybody guessed it. It was but Brees. It was Brees Hall who had a down week one as you would expect, and then dominate. Brees Hall will be part of the Rookie Review episode yeah. coming up soon. We're also going to break down the truth of the wide receiver position next time on the Fantasy Football. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.